Well, hello, hello, and welcome. I'm AJ O'Neill. I'm one of the software engineers that is has been working on the Dash Protector election. And I want to show you, well, we're, we're going to go through the, the results for the election uh, using the vote tally tool. And I'm just going to going to show you as I do that. So first of all, I've already got this, I've already got this code cloned to my local computer. So I'm in that directory right now. And we took a snapshot from last night of the masternode list. And so that was uploaded, as you can see, 16 hours ago. And then we have, uh, well, I'm, I'm actually just going to show you, we're going to get the latest list of votes, which is tagged with a timestamp, and then also the list of candidates that we've that we've had. I'm just going to show you how that's done so you can see. So what we have is an environment file that says what the voting start and end date are. I actually need to update that. I had that set for testing. So there we go. That was, oh, I guess it should be 1500 is the end date. That's the specific end time. Voting prefix was DTE 2022. Network is mainnet. And then uh, I I actually already have these downloaded, the votes.json and the candidates.json, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how that's done, just for reference. So we have examples.env. You can see here there's the URL that you can get the candidate list from. This is This is public at all times. And then this is the URL at which we can see the votes and the timestamps. And this is public once the election has completed. So this is the list of all the candidates, the list of all the votes. So we have these in our results folder right now. We can see uh, there's candidates, MN list, and votes. And then I'm just going to go ahead and run the tally and we're going to see what happens. Okay, so there are a few dozen votes that have been discarded. We will take a look at these manually later because this could actually be important. Uh, my guess is that if we look at these, I'm going to go ahead and open up results and then list. Okay, that one is just completely an invalid address. So that one deserves to be discarded. But I think some of these may have been... Um, someone used their collateral key like we used last year rather than using the voting key. So we'll just have to do a little bit of a manual check on that to make sure that everybody's vote is represented and that we're not representing any um, collateral key or th that if someone used their collateral key by mistake, that we're not counting both the collateral key and the voting key if they ended up using uh, both. So we'll have to do a little bit of manual checking on that, but here's the results. So it's, it's tight enough that I think that that uh, these votes that were discarded uh, because they were they were either just completely invalid keys or being done with a collateral key rather than a voting key, uh, we will want to take a look at those just to make sure that everybody's vote was represented because it is pretty close there. Yeah, see this one at least it was being done with the collateral address rather than the voting address. And let me just check to see if this person actually did also vote with their voting address. Let's take a look here. Okay, so that this person actually, they're represented both with their collateral address and their voting address, so we would only count that one once. Um, but we'll, yeah, we'll do a little bit of auditing on that. But as you can see here, those are our um, trust protector results. So congratulations to Rodrigo. And I, I don't actually, <laughs> just a software engineer. I don't know what goes on from here. <laughs> so anyway, that's that. Have a good one. Adios.